Now, if you have been to any of these big um, Melcom centers before, like the uh, Achimota Center or Kumasi City Mall uh, or the Accra Mall, okay? Okay. So if you have, if you have been to um, Accra City Mall, If you have been to Accra City Mall or you've been to the Melcom Center, the one that, uh, 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 the one at uh, Achimota, okay? If you have ever been there before, one thing you realize is that the place is too, it's, it's a big place, okay? With different kinds of products. Now the question is, who will go around the floors, okay? Or who will go around the various shelves to be checking which product has run out of stock and which product is still in, uh, 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 which of the products that they still have a lot of them in, in stock. So what it means is that somebody need to make sure that every single product on the shelves don't run out of stock. And the question is that who will do that business or who will do that job? And how long will it take that person to be able to go through the various shelves to check which uh, product that are in abundance or which product is running out of stock. So because of that, businesses give access to their internal network to external organizations, okay? So let me use a blue to indicate. So assuming Melcom has given access to these companies, let's say um, Melcom has given Nestle Nestle Ghana, Vortic Ghana, um, uh, Unilever. Okay, so these are external organizations. Okay, these are external organizations. They are not part of Melcom. So these are external organizations, okay? So Melcom, these are suppliers who supply products to Melcom. So what happens is that when Melcom gives these agencies or these industries access to their internal network, what happens is that if Nestle or uh, if Nestle supply 100 cartons of milk, okay? Let's say 100 cartons of milk, milk to Melcom. Nestle in their one corner or in their at their place can be monitoring from Melcom system how many cartons of milk are still left on the shelves of Melcom. Because as soon as somebody goes there and buy a carton of milk, the stock level will reduce from 100 to 99. Okay. So whilst people are buying, the stock level keeps reducing. So assuming they have set a stock uh, a stock out level to let's say um 20 okay the replenish level they have set it to 20 as soon as the stock level hits 25 nestle ghana will quickly rush back and replace or will, will restock the stock level of melcom because their stock level is going down and you see in the business world one thing that you don't want as a business you don't want to risk is allowing your customers or those who patronize your product to patronize the product of a competitive product. Because sometimes, so I always give this example that assuming you're a mother who uh, every morning you make a uh, Milo for your kids and you go to the shop or the store close to your house to go and get a tin of Milo when yours gets finished. You go there to go and buy some and they tell you that, oh, we don't have stock now. Some will come next week. So you waited till next week. You went and so no milk. And you said, okay, sorry, no Milo. So he said, okay, let me just buy Bonvita and give it to my kids. So you buy Bonvita on Monday morning, you do Bonvita tea for your kids and they drank it and they said, wow, mommy, this is so nice. What it means is that next time when you go out there to go and buy any of these beverages, you will not even consider buying Milo because your kids have now fallen in love with the Bonvita. So Nestle Ghana, knowing these kind of things, will not want to risk allowing their, their customers to be tasting their competitors' products. So 
these businesses will make sure that as soon as stock level is dropping, they will go and replenish it. So this is an internal network of Melcom. So when Melcom allows an external organization to have a limited access to their internal network, so this Nestle Ghana who is having access to the um, Melcom system, they are not seeing everything Melcom is doing, you know, including the amount of sales they made within the day, the number of items. No, 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 no. Those things are not for them. So Melcom gives these companies, the Voltec, Unilever, Bellacqua, and all those companies who supply product to Melcom. They give them limited access to their resources. And all these limited access is just for them to see the number of products that they've supplied to them, how many are still left on stock for them to be able to replenish it as soon as product is um, 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 running out. Okay, so it is very, very, very important. So those who are assessing the network from external source, we call them the, uh, the suppliers, the customers, and all those things. So when we talk about the intranet, we are saying the private network of an, a single company. So this is an intranet of Melcom, okay? This is an intranet of Melcom. And when Melcom allows an external organization a limited access, then they, this become an extra net. Yes, the minimum stock level, okay? The minimum stock level. All right. Um, Nicholas, okay. So companies who are assessing the organizations, um, what do you call it? Um, resource internal network from external source, they become an extranet. So we are saying that the benefit of intranet is that it improves information sharing because all of us are connected to a single database. It enhances communication among the, themselves. It reduces processing and it also enhances an organization publicity, okay? So you realize that when somebody goes to um, um, uh, uh, Melcom to go and buy something and the person doesn't need to follow a very long queue to buy the products, okay? The person doesn't follow a long queue before he buy, he pays for the product. And he tells, oh, this place there, if you go and you buy anything, quick, 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 you are done and you go. And realize that people will be, become very happy because they don't need to spend more time in queue just to make payment to certain um, uh, services that have been rendered to them. Then also cost saving through reduced cost of printing, okay? Because we are able to share information among ourselves, we don't need to be printing, printing, printing. So whatever you need to see, we can just share it across the network for everybody to also uh, see it. If you go to a typical organization, the internet enables the organization to divide itself, okay? Or the intranet system. So we have the finance department, we have the HR department, we have the manufacturing department, and we have the sales and marketing department. All of them are connected to a single organ uh, organizational network. So assuming this is um, a, uh, a roofing sheet manufacturing organization, assuming we manufacture roofing sheets, what happens is that if a customer walks to the organization, the first point of contact or the first people he will meet is the front desk, which is the HR, okay? So the HR will meet the person and ask him, hello, sir, or hello, madam, how may I help you? And the person, say, the person says, okay, I need, let's say, 10 packets, okay? 10 packets of roofing sheets. So the HR department will key it into the system, okay? And the account, account department or the finance department will see what has been keyed into the system and they will, they will show the quotes of how much it will cost for the 10 packets to be um, um, manufactured. Okay, so as soon as the quote is received by the HR department, they will communicate it back to the customer that, okay, the 10 packets will be like, let's say 8,000 CDs. So the customer will make payment to the accounts department. As soon as payment is made, Account department doesn't need to uh, elect the manufacturing department. They don't need to elect them because they are all connected to the same system. As soon as payment is made, the manufacturing department will see. So they will now begin to cut the roofing sheet into the various sizes 
as the, the customers requires, okay? So they'll cut it into pieces and make sure that the products are in quality, in good quality, um, um, machine output is as it wants, the tracking, everything is in order. Then after they are done with it, then the sales and marketing department will, pick, will, will, will um, either call or pick the product and deliver it to the customer. So you realize that this is a single organization and looking at how an internal or an intranet system is helping them to communicate among themselves without any hindrance. Okay, let's move on. Now, the intranet is the smaller network, the internal network of our organization, okay? And when we allow people outside the organization to have access, then we call it the extranet, okay? So the people outside include suppliers, the customers and collaborators, okay? Then the, when we extend it beyond the borders of just the sup, um, suppliers for people all over the world to have access, then we are referring to the internet. So from intranet to extranet, then to the internet, okay? So we have intranet, extranet, and the internet. So that is that. Now, let's start something very important. Yes, the hospital also has their intranet system, okay? All right, now, organizations utilize technologies based on the internet, the World Wide Web and wireless communication to transform their businesses. Now today, even the cocoa seller, okay? Even the cocoa seller on the streets, okay? Uses some level of technology. Somebody say how? Before this cocoa seller will go to um, the market to go and buy the millets, okay, for his cocoa manufacturing, he will pick the phone and will call the suppliers and ask them that, please, can I get a bag of millets? Okay, so everybody in today's world is using what we call the technologies, okay, and technology-based um, systems to improve their services. There is a company here in Kumasi that supplies cocoa or porridge, well packaged. So you get your, your, you get your porridge, it comes along with, um, what do you call it? Um, it comes along with bread, kose, and egg, okay, a full package. So you can order it online and they'll bring it to you at your doorstep. And I'm not here to do advert for. Yes, you can buy cocoa with Momo. Yes, there's one cocoa seller near my office who will accept anything, including Momo. Okay. All right. Why e-business? Why e-business? The aim of e-business is that it enhances an organization's competitiveness, okay? It enhances an organization's competitiveness, the competitiveness of an organization by deploring an information and communication technology throughout an organization and beyond through links to partners and customers. So if all of us are selling cocoa, okay? If all of us are selling cocoa on the streets and we are waiting for, assuming this is the streets, and you know, in, on some busy street, you can have about two joints or three joints selling the same product. So assuming this is cocoa joints, okay? This is another cocoa joint. All of us are waiting for customers to pass through, okay? To buy from us. Those who are passing by to buy from us. So assuming the whole day, we have 100 people buying. What will happen is that if you don't take care, it's going to be 50-50. It's going to be 50-50. 50 people will buy from Coco Seller 2 and two people will buy from Coco Seller 1. Or it can be that maybe Coco Seller 1 has added some kind of swag to his Coco. And now let's say about 65 people 
are buying from uh, Coco Seller 1 and um, um, 35 are buying from Coco Seller 2. Now, whatever the case may be, or whatever the case is, it, you are only limited to people who are passing through the streets. Okay. But if this same Coco Seller enables or uses the internet as a way of selling the cocoa online, maybe do advert on Facebook and that he attaches his number that, oh, if you need cocoa, just call this number or WhatsApp this number. We'll bring the cocoa to your doorstep. Now, this cocoa seller, one who is selling to 65 people, will not only be selling to 65 people because people who have seen his or her adverts on the internet will also come in and be buying. So assuming he gets 100 orders online on daily basis. So it makes it 165 orders in a day. And the cocoa seller too will only be limited to the same 35 um, supplies or orders that he receives on daily basis. So we are saying that it enables the competitiveness or it enhances the competitiveness of an organization by deploying an innovation, innovative information and communication technology throughout an organization and beyond through links to partners and their customers. It also involves the use of technology to automate okay, existing processes. So if you go to the banking sector, okay, if you go to the banks, for instance, that is why they have added a machine they call the automated teller machine, the ATM system. The ATM system does exactly the same thing that various tellers in the banks would do. Okay, that is receiving of cash, receiving and redrawing of cash. Okay, receiving and redrawing of cash. All these activities that are done by the various tellers in the, in the bank, there are ATM machines today that accept, uh, what do you call it, um, cash. Okay, so you want to make deposit, the ATM machine can help you do the deposit. So businesses today are using um, technology way or um, uh, technology to automate some of their existing processes. So just like I showed you on um, 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 Jumia, for instance, assuming I want to buy this shoe, okay, assuming I want to buy this shoe and I go to um, the payment section, okay, so I go to, okay, let me go to my cart and look at some of the items that I've added to my cart. Okay, so I've added these two items to my cart. Okay, I want to, if I want to go to checkout, what it means is that I'm, I'm, I'm proceeding to go and make payments. Okay, so I'll select my pickup site where I want to pick it, either a home delivery. Okay, assuming I want to, it to be delivered to my home. Okay, and I proceed to the next step. Now, as soon as I proceed to the next step, the payment method, the accepting mobile money or Airtel Tigo money, or I can use Visa to make payments. Now, all these payment systems that have been specified in their services over here, nobody will be sitting behind the computer to receive the payments. No, nobody will be sitting behind the computer to be receiving the payments. But what happens is that the system automatically accepts your payment. So that is what we are referring to over here. We are saying that it involves the use of technology to automate existing processes. So the negotiation system, nobody is there to negotiate with you that, oh, the item is 20 cities, you pay 15 cities. No, nobody is there to do that. The system has been set automatically. So it helps business to automate existing processes to also achieve process transformation or the change. Now, in the online platform system, there are certain key terms or themes that we need to understand. Number one, the technical. We are talking about the technology that underlines or that is um, uh, um, um, the, the infrastructure upon which the whole e-business system is built, okay? So to understand e-business or e-commerce, you need to have a basic understanding of the information technology upon which it is built upon. Then number two, the business. Apart from having the technology, you ask yourself, what type of business do you want to do online? Is it selling of bags? Is it selling of wigs? 
Is it selling of music products? Or you want to deliver a particular service, okay? Service includes those within the hospitality service. Assuming you are a consultant, okay? You are a consultant and people consult you online for you to give them expert opinion about certain things, okay? So what it means is that, what it means is that it helps businesses um, um, to be able to do business online. You need to first of all specify the type of business that you want to do. So technique, technology might provide the infrastructure, but it is the business application that provides the potential for return, okay? Then also you need to know the society that you are dealing with. E-business or e-commerce presents a global society issues such as intellectual properties, individual privacy violation, government or public policy, uh, policy issues, content regulation and changing customer behavior. So what type of society are you dealing with? Are they interested in the type of product that you want to sell? So all those things are very, very important. Now, according to the chairman of Intel called Andy Groove, okay, he refers to the internet as a typhoon force, okay? So if you have watched on the internet how the hurricane, um, uh, various hurricanes, okay, how they, 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 they um, operate. Let's, let me just show you um, what we are talking about. So we are saying the internet is like a typhoon force. Okay, Let, let's, uh, let's see. The typhoon wind or the typhoon force, or let me use the hurricane, okay? Okay, um, I want um, a live video of how some of these winds, how they, they blow on the... So look at, look at this type of hurricane, okay? Look at how strong and boisterous it is, okay? And to the extent that most of the time, it can lift buildings, okay? Most of the time, it can lift a whole building. It can lift a tree. It causes a lot of damages. Okay? So look at how strong some of this wind can become. Okay? The force behind this wind. It can lift people's cars. It, it does a whole lot of things. Force of the wind going around the hurricane. This advancing surge combines with the normal tides and can increase the water level by 30 feet or more. Okay, so that is what I wanted you to see. <laughs> Somebody say Hurricane Patricia. <laughs> you see, what, um, with all due respect to our women, I don't know why every hurricane is named after women. Is it because of their nature? With all, with all due respect to our women on the platform. <laughs> Okay, so look at how boisterous some of these winds looks like. And the groove, the chairman of um, um, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane, <laughs> somebody said, I think so, sir. I don't know why all the wind is, the hurricanes are named after the women. So um, this video that is circulating on social media, funny term. Finally, come much restraint. <laughs> anyway, trouble some people. Okay. The internet is like a typhoon force, okay? A 10 time force, not just a bit of a wind. It is a force that utterly, that fundamentally alters today's business. So, and the group tried to compare the internet to that kind of force or the wind that I just showed you in the video, okay? He tried to compare how the internet is currently changing the face of businesses. Now, 
just like I showed you on Ali, Ali Express and on Jumia, okay? You realize that whatever items that we, we, we search for on the internet, okay? Whatever product that we try to search for on the internet, let me show you somebody here. Okay, so whatever product that we try to set, we search over here. What it means is that they have products in the local Ghanaian market and that which they will send from abroad. Okay, so we are saying that the internet is changing the way businesses operate. And if you are in today's world and you don't implement these kind of technologies, you are, you are being left out. Now, the question we want to ask ourselves is, which website in Ghana has changed the way we spend time on the internet? Please, somebody say Hurricane Gina. I have not heard of Hurricane Gina. If a Gina has broken your heart, please don't come and verse your anger on Gina on this platform. I beg you. Don't come and settle your score on this platform, please. If you have any score to settle with a Gina, Please go and settle it over there. <laughs> Somebody said it's there. Well, I have not heard it. But if it is there, fine. But if it's not there, don't come and settle your score with <laughs> someone on this platform. All right, okay. That's just by the way. All right. So what we are saying here is that we want to find out which website has changed the way we spend time on the internet. And when we did the research, now let me show you something. Chini Jonas will ask the question, this research was done, I think in 2018. I don't know currently what the state of it is, but this research was done, I think in 2018 or so. Either 20, 2015 or 2018, I've forgotten the exact time. Even far back around that time, when we wanted to find out which website engages a lot of people online. In Ghana here, the one that was on top was Facebook. The second was Google. The third was Google. The third, the fourth, the fifth was the fourth was um, Yahoo and YouTube. And in the global scale, we had Google on top. i sorry, in the US, they had Google on top, Facebook second, YouTube third, Yahoo, and on and on and on. And on the global scale, we had Google first, Facebook second. Now, as from academic point of view, okay, I can see a particular trend that is going through the international community. What, it, what I'm trying to say here is that Within the international community, they make use of information search, which is Google, before entertainment follows Facebook and YouTube. But look at Ghana here. What are we doing with information? Ah, can I say we are Facebooking our say information? So <laughs> the top of our list here in Ghana <laughs> is Facebook. People will cry not having data, not because they need the data for anything, just to waste time on the internet. Facebook, showing pictures and watching unnecessary videos out there. Anyway, so this was a research that was done to ascertain or to look at some of the websites that a lot of people spend time on whenever they visit the internet. Please add Ed Carvet Thompson, I cannot mention what you are typing over there. If that is your favorite site, so be it. But I can't mention it over here. I'm begging you. All right. So look at the number 22 on the list in Ghana is business, businessghana.com. So we have relegated the business aspects to the bottom of our 
Hiraki. Yes, yeah, somebody say if today the, the search is done, yes, TikTok will definitely take the lead. Let me see. Uh, whilst I whilst I'm teaching, let me see if I can uh, try to do that search and show it to you. Um, in the in the uh, on the page. Whilst I teach, let me see if I can show I I can do that and show it to you. Okay, so. Now we want to look at the next item, e-business and e-commerce. You want to understand uh, most visited website. I want to see. Okay, I just searched the most visited website in Ghana the first 20 sites. And this is what I'm seeing from Alexa. According to Alexa, there's a website called Alexa, okay? Alexa. Alexa ranking. And Oh, they have Alexa has closed down from Amazon. Okay. Now, according to Amazon, these are the top most visited websites in Ghana. Now, our behavior has changed. It's from uh, Google to YouTube to google.com.gh. Then we come to Ghana web, facebook.com. Now, Facebook, according to this, <laughs> somebody say my bet. Yes, look at <laughs> mybet.com. <laughs> the potential investors okay our investors are there okay so my, my bet bet we are in the list wow my job online instagram instagram s videos hey number 15 <laughs> blogspot.com gh page peace fm online twitter and I think, I don't know when this search was done, but I think this is quite, it's not quite too recent. Because if it's quite recent, you should be having TikTok among this list. Because currently, TikTok is really, really making a name out there. Now let's see the most visited websites in the world. According to, according to Google, the most visited website in the world is, um, most visited uh, website by traffic in the world for all categories in May 2022 is Google, then you come to YouTube, Facebook, Wikipedia, Twitter, Reddit, Amazon, Instagram, Spotify, on and on and on and on. Okay, so these are the most visited website in the world. Let me see Ghana. This, oh, there is no Ghana in the list. Let me see USA. Okay, so I didn't, um, I, I wanted to check for particular countries, but over here, we are not seeing them, but that is what we wanted to say in this particular unit, trying to see which websites a lot of people visit. All right, now let me quickly finish up unit one. In fact, we spent a lot of time in unit one and um, I know it's the basis for everything that we are going to do. Now, E-commerce, when we talk about e-commerce, we are talking about, in general terms, we are talking about the process of buying and selling or exchange of goods and products, okay? Or exchange of products or services and information through computer networks, including the internet, the buying and selling of products. So according to Bontis and De Castro, they also, yes, I'll be finishing very soon so that you can, have about 10 minutes break and we'll come uh, about 30 minutes break and we'll come back. So according to Bontis and De Castro, okay. According to Bontis and De Castro, we explain e-commerce and they are saying is the buying 
and selling. So please take this note of these two words, buying and selling. Okay. So it presents a brief definition of electronic commerce is about, according to timers, they also say that e-commerce is about doing business electronically. Okay. Now, whenever we are doing business online and we are exchanging money for products, it's what we call the commerce. Okay. The commerce. When you go to the market, we can talk about we can talk about a commerce as buying and selling. You go to the market, somebody takes money from you and gives you a product. That is a commerce. But the business is the person who has set himself up out there to deliver a particular service. Okay. So there are two main types of e-commerce. There is what we call the buy side e-commerce and the sell side e-commerce. So example is we have a company like Unilever. And we have a company like Melcom. These are all individual companies, okay? And Unilever delivers products to Melcom. Now, when we talk about buy-side e-commerce, we are referring to a transaction between a purchasing organization and its supplier. So Melcom over here purchases products from Unilever, okay, and sell. So the relationship, looking at it from the angle of Melcom, it is a buy side e commerce. When they are buying from Melcom, uh, sorry, Unilever on an e commerce platform. So it refers to a transaction between a purchasing organization and its supplier. So Mel Unilever here is a supplier of Melcom. Then we talk about a sell side e commerce. And we are also saying that it refers to a transaction between a supplier organization and its customer. So Unilever here is a supplier. Okay, it's a supplier. And Melcom is a customer of Unilever. So when Melcom uh, Unilever um, produces its product, they, they deliver some of them to Melcom for Melcom to sell on their behalf. So that is the difference between a buy side and a sell side e-commerce. So looking at or, or uh, from whichever angle you want to look at it from, that is how we, we take e, um, the, the either it to be a buy side e-commerce or a sell side e-commerce. When we take a sell side e commerce, we can also divide it into four main types. Okay. We have what we call the transactional e commerce site. We have the service oriented relationship building site. We have what we call the brand building site. And we have what we call the portal or the publishing site. Let's look at them one by one. Because of time, let me, I'm trying to, because most of the things I've already explained them in our previous slides. So when we talk about transaction sites, they enables the purchase of products online. So if you go to a website like um, melcom.com, okay, I think melcom.com.gh, melcom Ghana. If you go to their website, melcom.com, okay, what happens is that you are able to see some of the products that melcom is selling. Somebody says, sir, please, with the definition of e-commerce, which one do you prefer? I prefer all. I prefer all. All right. So look at, if I come to melcom.com, they have a lot of, they have a lot of products, okay? They have a lot of products that they sell, categories, can go to television and audios, and some of the things that they are selling on their platform, okay? Some of the things that they have quoted on their platform, you can see the items, you can make purchase of them. So um, they, they, they've, they've attached the prices of the item that they are selling, okay? So if I can go here and buy, okay? I can add to cart and buy online from Melcom site. So what we are saying here is that a transactions e-commerce site, they enable the purchase of product online. The site also support the business by providing information from consumers 
that prefer to purchase offline. So if I want to go to Melcom's shop to go and um, buy from their shop instead of buying it online, I can go through some of the product that they have on their website. Okay. I can go through the site and see all the items that Melcom has, um, uh, um, whatever they have on their site and know, okay, this one, they have it available. So I can buy it from any of their retail centers. Okay. And I can also get a lot of information about a product. So assuming this is what I want to buy, the JBL speaker. Okay. I can read a lot of information about it. So if you come here, it gives me a lot of details. Okay. It gives me a lot of details about the product. Unlike me going to the shop and seeing the same speaker sitting on their shelves, I will not be able to know how uh, the details about this particular product. I will not be able to know about this particular product. But when I come to their online system, I am able to see them. So providing a lot of information for customers who want to purchase offline. Example is the retail website, the travel website, the online banking. Then we have what we call the service-oriented or relationship building sites. These are websites that provide information to stimulate the purchase offline and build relationship. The main business contribution is to encourage offline sales and generate leads to potential um, customers. Example of this particular service oriented is a website we call um, prices.com or GSM Arena. Okay, there's a website called GSM Arena. Every, um, every, um, um, somebody saying the GBL 2000 plus. Yes, this is not. A normal, those ones that, excuse me to say, the guy people have been hanging around their neck, roaming around though. This is original one. This one, you can use it to do jam in your house. Very, 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 very expensive. They are very good and very durable. Okay. These are quality products. Okay. This JBL speaker, very, very, very quality. All right. So we are looking at the next item on the list. And I'm showing you. Oh. Okay, so I'm showing you GSM Arena. So I want to go and buy, let's say, iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max, and I want more details about the phone. When I come here and I search for the phone, there are a lot of details. Okay, a lot of details about iPhone 13 Pro Max that I can be able to read them. But this GSM Arena don't sell phones. Okay, they don't sell phones. I can see pictures. If I want to see pictures of the phone, I can. Okay, good. I think my network flicked, uh, flicked, uh, uh, flicked a, a bit. So let's continue. So a brand, brand building site, they provide information and online experience to support brands. Okay, they are typically available for online purchase. They are typically of low value and high volume, fast moving consumer goods. So this also, they try to provide information for the purchase of the items online. Let's quickly look at portals. They provide information, news or entertainment. So my job online, the Ghana web and all those sites that we, we have been looking at, they are also example of publishing, uh, a portal publisher or media sites, okay? They provide information, news or entertainment about a range of topics. The information may be on the site or through a link to other websites. So just like I showed you earlier on, okay? We went to my job online or Ghana web to read news. But whilst we are reading news, there are adverts, okay, of somebody selling buildings. So when I clicked on it, it tried to link me to the particular websites of these particular companies that are selling this building. I hope you're with me. So we call it the portal or the media site. Now, we want to look at e-business also. We have looked at the commerce. We are looking at the business. Now, it is commonly used as an adjective to describe businesses that mainly operate online. So according to IBM, IBM defines e-business as a transformation of key business processes through the use of internet technologies. The transformation of key business processes. So e-business, basically, we are talking about all the business processes or business activities that we, we, we do, including the advertisement, including the, um, um, the, 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 the 
the business itself, everything that we do, presenting it online. So key business products include the marketing of the products, the manufacturing, the sales, the inbound and outbound logistics, all these things. The transformation of these key business processes through the use of internet technology. So all these activities that we use to perform manually, now we are trying to use technology or internet to do all these things on the internet. That is what we refer to as the e-business. So according to Chaffee, he also defines e-business as all electronically mediated information exchange, both within an organization and with external stakeholders supporting the range of business processes, a variety or support a range of business processes. So electronic business on, in, uh, as a, um, 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 according to Chaffee, we are talking about every information mediated exchanges, both within the organization and with external stakeholders. What is the difference between the two? Okay, let me also do um, this. Sometimes e-business is used interchangeably or the e-business and e-commerce are sometimes used interchangeably or sometimes they are the same. And sometimes too, e-commerce is a subset of e-business. Now, how do we say e-commerce is a subset of e-business? Now, let's see the difference between the two. E-commerce involves the external transaction between an organization and a third party. Okay, so a business dealing with a third party and a third party over here might be a customer, a supplier, and all those kind of people, a third party, okay, which involves both internal and external transaction. E-commerce differs from e-business in that in e-commerce, or sorry, in e-business, there is no commercial transaction. In e-business, there is no commercial transaction or exchange of value across the organization or individual boundaries, okay? It takes place in, um, sorry, it takes place in e-business, sorry. So e-commerce also differs from e-business in that no commercial transaction or exchange of value across organizational or individual boundaries. It takes place in e-business. E-business is digitally enabling enablement of transaction and um, uh, processes within a firm. So when a firm, somebody saying, say, I can't hear you. Wow, please, can you hear me? Somebody saying, I can't hear you. Okay, so Osman, you are saying you cannot hear me. Please kindly check your internet or your connection. Okay, the rest says, they, the rest are saying they can hear me. So please check your, your, your connection over there. So e-business is a digital enablement of transactions and processes within a firm, and therefore does not focus on exchange in value with customers. So the commerce is about the exchange of value, the paying and receiving of products, but the business is just enabling your transaction or your business on the internet, okay? Then that, that is the two main difference between the two. Let's quickly look at the advantages and I'll just end up this section for now. What are the opportunities? We are saying that it enables organizations to reach more customers without the hindrance. So I just showed you Jumia where somebody in China, instead of the person coming to Ghana here to come, to come and rent a shop and pick workers and pay for rent, pay for electricity and pay tax to the government, the person sits at the comfort of his home in China and can sell to people in Ghana here and make all the money out of Ghanaians, okay? So if you go to any of these um, uh, um, Jumia pickup centers, you can find a lot of product people have ordered from online. And these companies are not here in Ghana. They are not, government cannot take any tax or any revenue from them. And they are making their money because, because of the internet, they are able to reach more consumers without the hindrance of geographical lim uh, limitation. Then also, it also enables more detailed information about product price and availability. Just like I showed, I showed you on a, a Melcom website, okay? If you go to Melcom website, that like I showed you, over there, we are able to see a lot of products, okay? And information about the products, we can see all of them over there. Then 
it enables a high level of customization and interactivity. Now, if I am buying an iPhone, okay, if I'm buying an iPhone from Apple directly, from Apple shop directly, I can chat with them and tell them that, oh, this is my iPhone that I'm buying. I know the biggest, the one with the biggest size in the market is one terabyte, okay? The iPhone 13 Pro Max, the one with the biggest size is ter uh, one terabyte. But okay, me, I want mine to be done with a five terabyte internal storage. And I want the, the, the housing of the phone to be gold plated. Okay, they will quote you a price. And if you're able to pay for the price, they will, do, they will customize it for you. Okay, so what it means is that when we are buying online, most of the time we are dealing directly with the manufacturer. And if you are dealing with the manufacturer, what it means is that you are able to also determine, you are able to also determine how you want to customize that particular product. Then it facilitates a high level of affiliation with other organizations and websites. So just like I just showed you here, over here, I was on ghanaweb.com and by clicking on an advert on my uh, uh, ghanaweb.com, it linked me up to um, this particular website, uh, Los, Lodue Lord, Estates, Lodue Estates. So it linked me over here. So what it means is that there is a partnership between those two organization so there is it has facilitated a, a, a partnership affiliation between those organizations it also reduces organizational transaction costs which i've already explained what the transaction costs are it provides of opportunities for building lasting relationship with their stakeholders like most of the time let me show you something over here let me show you something over here I bought something on Jumia.com, okay? And when I bought the item, when the item came, I realized the item was 40, okay? And I returned, I opened a return for the product, okay? I opened a return for the product and they refunded my money. So if you see over here, refund completed, refund completed over here i bought this uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it i bought this vr system and when it came it was fake i i i uh, opened a dispute for my money and they refunded every single peswa okay so what it means is that Anytime I am buying from all these websites, it provides a building a opportunity for building a lasting relationship with the stakeholders because now I am logged in, soft logged in with Jumia because when I'm buying something from Jumia, I am of 100% assurance that if the product comes and the product is not as I want it, Somebody is saying, please, my question is, can the government tax foreign firms whose products and services are being patronized by Ghanaians? The only task the government do is he takes, um, um, what do you call it? Um, duty, okay, the shipping, the shipping fee. The returning cost is on, the, uh, is on Jumia, the facilitator. They facilitate the transaction between you and the one who, who, who uh, the, the one you bought the item. And I know Jumia one way or the other will take the money from the, the supplier. Because if you don't supply what the customers demand, the what it means is that the customer will re return it. And if they are returning it, you, the one that supplied the fake item, will be the one to bear the cost of the returning, the returning cost. Okay? So that is what we mean. So if we have a website and we sell product and customers can interact with us, and whenever they have question, we will we will respond. When they have issue, we are able to be there for them. We will create what we call a soft locking. They will they will love our product forever and ever. Whenever they come online and they want to buy something, we will be at the first point of call that they will be buying from us. What are drivers of e business adoption? What are some of the things that enables organization to adapt e business? Number one, 
technological factor. I'm going to mention them over here so that I don't, when I get to the slide, where, where the, the, the information about them are, I'll just skip them. So technological factors. So before we can implement e-business and have a successful implementation of it, one, we have to, one, the first thing we need to do is what type of technology do we have? The technology. Do we have enough servers? Have we built enough websites that is very sophisticated to um, uh, uh, handle the requests and all those things? Number two, the political terrain, political factor. Is your product supported by the, the, the political environment? Okay, so the political factor, we also look at the social factor. Every day I keep saying this, that in the year 2000, we used to have internet. Internet was now springing up a bit in Ghana. Okay, in the year 2000 onwards, that was when the internet began springing up. If Jumia was available in the year 2000, the question is how many people would have patronized Jumia at that time? Maybe some would have patronized it because even in the year 2000, there were companies in the United States that were doing this kind of online business system because the society around that time over there understood what it means to buy and sell online. But in Ghana here, it is just from the year 2015 all the way downwards or from 2010 downwards. That is when people started accepting the buying and selling system online. Because when you try to do buy something online, somebody will tell you, hey, you want to go and buy something on the internet? They will cheat you. Your money will not come back. But these days, people have lived to appreciate the fact that the internet is a, also a place where people can buy and have comfort that when they buy item, they will receive the item. Um, it's, it's quite unfortunate that my internet, my webcam is not working. I would have showed you some of the things that I've purchased online here that I'm even using. What I'm using to be right on the screen is one thing that I bought online. So then also economic factors. Are people financially capable to be able to buy? Okay. Then also the type of payment system. Currently, people are free to buy online because of the Momo system. Okay. Because if we are to be using credit card, Visa card, MasterCard, the debit cards. A lot of people, me for instance, I don't like using my debit card to do any online transaction. I will prefer to use Momo to using these debit cards. Okay. Then what are some of the drivers? The commercial benefits in terms of the profit factors, the cost factors, the efficiency drivers. Then also because of the competitive factor, Okay, whenever we implement e-business, competitive, uh, competitively, we will become more competitive than our competitors. What are some of the cost reduction drivers? Help to reduce staff and transportation costs, cost of materials such as papers, reduce sales and purchasing costs, marketing cost is being reduced, supply chain cost is also being reduced, administrative cost is also being reduced. So all these costs are being reduced as a result of the internet. What are the efficiency? Increased speed at which products with which suppliers can be obtained. Now, if you, are, you sell a particular product and you want suppliers to supply you product, it's just a matter of going online and searching for the products and you have a lot of suppliers who are ready to supply you the products, okay? But please be very careful with these so-called suppliers. Some of them will make you pay the money and the product will never come. Then the speed with which goods can be dispatched. Goods like the soft goods, okay, which we make mention of music, movies, and um, um, softwares, software products. All these can be distributed over the internet. Then increase speed at which the organization responds to customers through email. When a customer sends an email to the company, they are able to see it instantly and they're able to also respond instantly. So what we are saying is that it increased the speed at which organization responds 
to their customers. What also um, 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 drives people, uh, uh, industries and individuals? What drives our internet adoption? What makes us to use the internet? Number one, when we, are, when we use the internet to do or transact business online, it helps us to customize products like I showed you that we said the internet enables high level of customization through the product, different products that they offer over there. So it, uh, it helps us to be able to customize products. Then also consumers feel part of the community. Currently, I feel part of the junior community because whatever I'm buying from there, I know that if there is a problem with it and I return it, Jumia will pay my money back to me. Then also it provides convenience for customers. It provides convenience for customers. When we say convenient for customers, what it means is that instead of you going to the market to go and buy certain things, okay, I need to buy uh, toothpaste, I need to buy rice, I need to buy this, I need to buy that. I can just come to jumia.com. Okay, come to their home page and all my groceries. Okay, okay. So I come to supermarket. And within my supermarket, everything that I need in the home, from oil to rice to everything, I can just uh um sorry, I don't know what is happening. My internet keeps um giving me a small headache here. Please, um, sorry for that. Let me quickly run through. And when we come back for the next section, I'll check whatever is the problem and I'll get it fixed out. So um, cost rate that we are saying that it provides customers with more choices. So when we search for a particular product like oil and others, the same oil that is being sold by someone for it, um, look at this. Um, let me go to the oil section. Okay, the same oil somebody is selling for um 13 cities another is also selling for 24 cities so choices for you to choose from which one you want to buy the same fry tolu okay okay this is 900 ml and this is 500 okay that's a difference but sometimes even the same 900 ml you will get somebody selling it for 24 cities and another person selling for let's say like 21 cities okay so it provides you or gives you um access to or choices Somebody is saying disadvantage of the internet. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's quickly run through and we'll do break. We'll go for our short break. Then what are the barriers to e-business adoption? I looked at some of the adv uh, advantages, a lot of advantages. Number one, the setup costs. It's very expensive to set up e-business environment. Number two, after setting it up, you need to run it. Okay. Updating it with changes of prices, new adding new products to the website. So it's also a cost. Then some organizations also don't have the time to also um, implement the e-business. Then also some of those also require a uh, lack skill. Um, 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 take away a lot of illegalities in the system. And because of that, people will fight technology. And because of that, oh, what is happening today? I don't know what is happening today. My internet is giving me a real headache here. Okay, all right. Let me just finish through. So lack of board interest and also lack of knowledge. It's also um, people don't have the knowledge in the e-business, difficulty in integrating different IT systems, lack of board interest. When the board of directors don't have interest to invest in your uh, uh, e-business system, it can also be a challenge. Then lack of technology or bandwidth. If you're, you want to implement e-business environment, what it means is that you need to have a very powerful and stable internet connectivity. So if your internet connectivity is not stable, these are some of the issues that you will face. So there are other um, barriers, okay? But among all the barriers, the one that stands tall is the setup cost. The setup cost is one of the biggest barriers to e-business 
implementation. Now, the last thing we want to look at today is what are some of the barriers to internet consumers' adoption? What prevents people from using the internet? Number one, those who don't use the internet to do transactions, sometimes they don't know the importance of it. Number two, lack of trust. People don't trust the internet system. Number three, security problems. Number four, lack of skills. They don't even know how to do it. Then some people also don't have lack of internet access. Where they are, what to use to even make calls is even, a, is even difficult. And to even talk about, um, 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 uh, what do you call it? Using the internet. The, number the last one is the cost of the internet. Now, internet is very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. These days, I'm using MTN TableNet to get, let's say, 500 gigabytes of data. We are talking about around 900 Ghana CDs. Okay? We are talking about around 900 to 1,000 Ghana CDs for 500 gig of data. So internet is very, very expensive. Then the last one, what are some of the risks? When you are doing business online, hackers can penetrate through your system. Okay. If you have an online business platform, hackers can penetrate through your system and steal customers' information or even steal credit card details from customers. That is one of the barriers or one of the challenges or the risks. Number two, websites may fail due to spike or increase in customers' visit, uh, uh, traffic. What we are saying here is that those of you who, who, who have been customers of YAC before, you know, when I talk about YAC customers, those who have to write about five or 10 times before getting it. When the results are released and you go to YAC website to go and print out your results, most of the time you go there and you will see that the site is not loading or the site, the page is not opening because there's a lot of people on the site trying to do exactly the same thing at the same time. So that is what we call visitors, a uh, site may fail because of the increased number of visitors, okay? Possible of breaking privacy and date protection law. That is sending unsolicited email, un, um, unsolicited emails. So you go to a, a particular website and the website wants you to register and you register and every now and then they are sending you a lot of emails that does not make sense flooding your email so these things can annoy customers and they will stop using your service then also the next one is making a wrong decision about e-business investment hearing that e-business is good you just go and invest into it without looking at the pros and cons of it okay without looking at the pros and cons of it you just jump into it if you make a wrong decision it's going to be a very big problem for you then also problem with fulfilling of goods and service ordered online a customer orders a product and you tell the customer that the product will be delivered to him in five days' time. And the customer is waiting for it and gets it around after 90 days. Do you think that particular customer will come back again? <laughs> somebody says Kiku. Yes, Kiku hmm, is somebody's product. I don't want to say much. The least said, the better. Mm -hmm. Kiku, the least said, the better. The days they, they will tell you on the system is not what it, how much how many days it takes for the pride the product to come. Then the last one is not responding or ignoring customers' inquiries. So when customers when customers make um, what do you call it an order to, for a product or they make an inquiry and you the organization begin or keeps ignoring them, okay, what will happen is that these customers will not come back again. You will destroy what we call the customer's goodwill. You will destroy the customer's goodwill. Let me give ourselves two minutes for question. If you have any question, you can raise your hand and I'll open, I'll allow you to ask it. Uh, you, you can uh, raise your hand and I will mute you to ask your question before we go for 30, about 20 minute break. Please, I'm repeating again. I'm going to give you assignment for you to do by the close of today's lecture. So please, those of you who have been logging off and on, it is part of your continuous assessment to so make sure you are here. Okay. And those of you who have also um, renamed themselves to 
uh, uh, iPhone, Techno, IMF. Please, the system is taking attendance. So I'm begging you, rename yourself with your full name so that we can be able to know who and who was here during our first lecture. Okay. And I'm, I, one, once again, you are not going to have you are not going to have um, system analysis and design today. He will meet you tomorrow. So he's going to take the whole of tomorrow. System analysis, system analysis and design will be meeting you, God willing, tomorrow. So I am handling you for the whole of today. Okay. I'm handling you the whole of today. So without any question, please, um, let's give ourselves some break. And when we come back, it is it's 9.49. So by 10, by 10.10, 10, Let's give ourselves 20 minutes because we are all joining from our homes. Okay, so I don't think we should spend much time to for this break. So 20 minutes and I'll be back to do. We have three units to do before the close of today. So please, when it's 10.10, 10, I'll be back here to continue the class. So thank you and see you in our next section.